everybody, Matt Yakovet, head of open source strategy at Percona. I'm playing around with Pana and um, was doing something that uh, took me a little bit of time to work out all the pieces and thought I'd share. So, um, what I want to do is this is my custom deck. Well, the first video that I did uh, working on a custom dashboard, and you can see it's evolved quite a bit since then. Uh, you can get all kinds of stuff. But what I want to do is be able to quick, uh, click on an individual query um, within here, pull up all of the history for that query for a given time frame. Um, so I actually got this to work a few minutes ago, but then got to save it, and then I had a problem. So um, I'm going to have to redo it. So I figured might as well record it while I redo it. Um, but the idea is you find one of these queries here, you see like, oh, well... Um, you can get like response time down here. You can get like a heat map. Well, let's say you want to click on one of these queries. You want it to open up a new window that will specifically have, you know, data in there. So for this, um, there's a couple pieces that I already set up. Let me go through those um, real quick. So the most challenging one is. Uh, you know, really getting the variables right that you have to pass through. It's not hard. It's just it's not as maybe intuitive as you would think. So um, if you take a look here, you know, this is my list of the top 10 queries that I have. And uh, basically what I want to do is take anytime somebody selects one of the queries and pop over to another um, location. Now, there's a couple different ways that you could do that. Um, so there is this, you know, massive field data link thing. Um, this one is going to do it for, um, kind of like the, the entire row here, but I just want the one field to click and I might have another field do something different even. So if I come to the overrides, um, what I've done is I've added a override for the query field and this is the query field. Um, I've gone ahead and then added, if you click the add controls, um, a data, uh, so the data link in this case, you can see here, um, goes to my server um, with um, getting the dashboard that I just showed you, which is kind of empty right now, working, and it's passing all variables. Now, this is all of the settings for the drop-down boxes that I had in my dashboard. They'll all be passed. Um, and then I'm sending this custom uh, variable as well, which is query ID. So I'm getting the data that's being sent, so data.fields query ID, and I'm passing it in. Now, the critical thing that is not necessarily intuitive is in Grafana, all the variables that you pass through the URL have to start with var dash, and then you know you can use it in the next dashboard. Um, and so it's kind of a not necessarily intuitive thing. Um, took me, you know, 10 minutes to kind of poke around and say like, ah, oh, okay, that makes sense now. Uh, but then it's also passing the URL um, time range. So it has uh, the time range uh, that I have my graph set to as well. So if we take a look here, um, we're going to just go ahead and say fine. Obviously clicking on this brings up this um, window that has a couple of dashboards that are kind of bare bones and you know they're not working right now that's okay um, but you can see here in the URL um, when you pass the all variables you get the variables that were set through those drop downs which is our node name so you know we've got the node um, in this case it's local host local domain and then var service name which right now is all and so and then uh, the types, which is my database. Well, now here's where I have that var query ID. You can see that this is the hash that we're storing. So now that's come over. Now, in order to get that to work, you have to come into the variables, um, and you need to make sure that you have variables set up for each of those um, variables that are being passed, with the exception of the ones that are uh, uh, for like time range um but you can see that um query id is the one that i set up for the custom one which is a constant 
and it is query ID. So it is what is after the var dash, and it's just empty. That's it. And so once you do this, it kind of sets up the linking and the combination between the two. So it should. Now, I took a copy of what was this. Okay, and to do that, you just come in here and. Come into this and you can hit more copy. Okay. And you can come over to your dashboard and if you panel paste from and you see how this came up exactly the same way that it appeared in other. Okay, for that. Now the challenging thing here. Um, what we want to do is now add in that query ID that we did. Okay. Roll down. There we go. And we're going to put and query ID, which is our query ID from the PMM that up um, and we're gonna have to use the single quotes because it is a text field even though it's I'm going to put dollar sign worry got to be spelled the same way as you set up the con no you'll get weird errors Bye. Quick, let's refresh up oh, and we got no data be a couple of reasons number one the time frame may not have been good for typically data here fine days because i don't in the last seven days why nope it's giving me a shot. all right cool so um in order to debug um it's straightforward um oh i so this is one of those um weird things that uh i noticed so i clicked on a mysql query and so you can see here if we go to the original pmm dashboard that I, from the database perspective i got postgres mysql all so I've been passing all back over to um, this other dashboard, okay? But you can see from a database perspective, MySQL doesn't show up. So uh, this confused me for a couple of minutes here. Um, but basically what that is, is the variables don't aren't set up for correctly. If I come in to... Yes, my. So if I come in here and I set these to all. Um, now I can select all of the different instances. Now all the database. Now it's. So, um, if you if you run into a problem where you start to see some of your variables missing, the variables aren't pages. Um, but you can see there when I went and refreshed the data and ran the query inspector, now only that one single value shows up. So it's just the one. That's it. Um, which, you know, is exactly what we want. Okay. Um, so now you can see, you know, this query and just that one. We selected just that one. Let's go ahead and hit apply. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and. And so what I want to do is not only have this particular query here, um, I also want to get some of the other things that I have on this other dashboard. So, for instance, um, this is the database response time graph. That's a graph that I really would like to see over here. 
um, I want to see the response time. This is for all queries on the main dashboard, but I want to see it for um, all of the queries or all of just that one query and how it changes time. So I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before, which is, you know, that. Now what I've got is I have a, I have the response time, but this one does not select just that individual query or that query ID that I passed. So for this one, I need to come in and I need to edit it again. And so now I come in. There we go. So I just dropped the type. So you can see here, I'm just typing in. Uh, the query ID, goals, query ID. Make sure you use, again, correct case. Um, so now what we've got is we've got, hey, it's just the response time for that particular query. Um, and so if we drill in, you can actually start to now you see this nice little, you know, graph here, and you can see that, you know, when this started running, it was taking, you know, around four tenths of a second. And, you know, at its peak, it was taking three milliseconds. Uh, same thing here when we go to the, um, I want to get the heat map. So I'm going to go to that one as well. Again, same thing that said in the Go. Joy, joy. Hi. Just a... okay. So now you can see um, when we look at these buckets, um, different things, and most of them were under this one millisecond. But it looks like at one point had one that kind of spiked up there above the one millisecond. Holds true with what we see. A couple of data points that are above the one millisecond so in this bit right above. There were none during that time. And so if we were to scroll out a little bit, um, you'll see that kind of fill in a little bit. Because I was just running like a five minute workload, graphs have a lot of empty. Um, so I was looking. But if you've got a production workload that's running all the time, you should see um, that run fairly regularly. Now, the one thing that I noticed, you know, I wanted to do um, a couple other things. I've got this query ID here. I wanted to take that query ID and, um, you know, populate it in a text feed, uh, just the query itself. Um, and so I was playing around with that and I couldn't get that to work. I might be able to get that to work later, but if you come into the text, there is no way for you to really go grab. Um, that variable or uh, query the database to get that information back. So it's something that, um, you know, it's something that, that is definitely kind of a little annoying. Arc down, yeah, but you can't make it dynamic, it seems, um, which is definitely a problem. Um, Uh, so working on that, but uh, I just thought I'd share, you know, hey, if you're looking to link uh, one data to another and pass back the variables, um, 
you know, this is a, a quick and easy way to do it. It's not that hard. It's just there's these little gotchas with using the var dash, then the variable name, and then making sure you set up the variables properly in each of the dashboards. Um, and we'll go from there. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully this